Welcome to this episode of Conversation with Cousins. We hope you are encouraged, inspired by the words that we share with you today. Good morning, good morning, good morning, or good evening, good evening, good evening, whenever you are watching this. Again, this is Conversation with Cousins from a Christian perspective, and this is episode 13 or 14? 14. That's what I thought, 14. 14. So again, we are grateful and thankful. Uh, Again, we've been doing this a little over three months now. And we thank God for all of you who are having rocking with us. Again, we thank you all for your comments and all the things that you have shared along the way, how this conversation is blessing you. Again, we will ask you to continue to like, share, uh, to continue to like and share it and tag people. Uh, when you see it, uh, let people know uh, that we are having a genuine conversation. Again, it's now scripted. Uh, we literally are having a conversation. Uh, we have a topic. We may drop a scripture. But outside of that, we just allow the Holy Spirit to flow. Uh, so my name is Eddie J. And my cousin's name is? Sherry T. And I am so glad, along with my cousin, to have you in our homes today as you allow us into your homes. May the spirit of the Lord continue to guide you into all truth as we come into this new year of 2023. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going into 2023 with expectancy, knowing that God will continue to do and complete a work that he began, not only in you, but in me, and he'll continue it until his until his return. So we're going to give thanks as we should do as we enter into his divine presence today with this conversation of cousins between me and Eddie J. We're going to have an exciting time. We just hope you do too. Back to you, cuz. Again, as cuz just shared, this is the first episode of 2023. Uh, if you are listening to this, or if you are watching this, you ought to be rejoicing because the Lord has allowed you to cross over into a new year. So you, I don't know, my cousin, I know she's excited. I'm excited. We ought to be excited because the good Lord has allowed us to cross over into a new year. And I don't know about you, I'm expecting great things uh, in the year of 2020. Again, on last week, we kicked off a series entitled Boundaries, entitled Boundaries. And on last week, we dealt with basically guarding your heart, guarding your heart. That was basically the theme of what we dealt with on last week. This week, we want to talk about love, not the world. That's what we want to deal with today. Love, not the world. And again, uh, as we get to continue to talk about boundaries, as me and Cubs was talking before we got on, uh, it, it always seemed to bring us back to love. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 no matter what topic we deal with, it always, so we ought to see uh, uh, everything is rooted in love. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we ought to see that. Uh, so again, our foundational scripture we want to use for uh, this this episode is First John chapter two, verses fifteen through verse seventeen. First John chapter two, verses fifteen through seventeen, and I'm going to read that uh, in two passages today. Uh, I'm going to read it in the Christian Standard Version, and then I'm going to read it in the Message Translation. Uh, so the Christian Standard Version says this. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm -hmm. For anything in the world, for everything in the world, rather, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's possession is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world with its lust is passing away, but the one who does the will of God remains forever. Now I want to read it from the message translation. I want to read it from the message translation. I like how it says it. 
uh, it says it this way. Do not, don't rather love the world's ways. Don't love the world's good. Love of the world squeezes out love for the Father. Mm. Practically everything that goes on in the world, wanting your own way, wanting everything for yourself, wanting to appear important has nothing to do with the Father. It just isolates you from him. The world and all its wanting, wanting, wanting is on the way out. But whoever does what God wants is set for eternity. Oh, my so again, uh, we want to look at, we want to uh, delve into this passage. And the first thing it, it, it alliterates uh, is do not love the world. Uh, do not love the world. And, and John has told us that if we walk in sin's darkness and claim to be in fellowship with God, we are lying. Oh. Uh, we learned that uh, those of us uh, who were a part of our family Zoom, uh, uh, we went through uh, the book of 1 John in one of our studies. Oh. And that's basically uh, 1 John 1 and 6. Uh, uh, now, John... Uh, points out a specific area of sin that especially threatens our fellowship with God, mm -hmm. and that is worldliness mm -hmm. uh, to love the world. Now, the world does not mean the animals or the trees or the mountains or the rivers which God created. To appreciate these things and give God glory for his creation is not what John is talking about. He's referring to the fallen world uh -huh. system, the falling world system. Uh, the world was originally very good, uh -huh. uh, but we all know Adam and Eve, they messed it up. They messed up all of us, uh, uh, but, but when they inherited the world, everything was perfect, uh -huh. uh, but because of what they did, uh, they... Uh, uh, put the world out, out of whack, out of chaos, made the world chaos, and now we have what we have today. Uh, so uh, Adam's uh, descendants began human culture with music, art, and writing. All of that stuff was good. Uh -huh. uh, but we all know man got a hold of it now, uh, and we know man culture is fallen, and culture placed in the wrong values on many things. Mm -hmm. uh, so the world places value uh, on on money, materials, respect, promotions, achievements, and ain't nothing wrong with that when we have it in the proper perspective. Yeah. But if that is your total focus and that's what all you're trying to do, mm -hmm. then that's what is called worldliness. Go ahead, Cuz. Oh yeah, powerful start off, and 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 I'm gonna pick it up right where you let up let left off that is called worldliness when 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 the enemy let me just go ahead and put the devil out here the enemy the the the, the enemy triggered the corruption the enemy triggered the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the lust the pride of life and and again here john is trying to set it straight don't love the world because when you love the world you're not you you are not in the will of god you and we all want to be in the will of God as believers. So we are we already know what it means to come out of this because most of us came out of this when God's light of love was shed abroad in our hearts. So as, as we go through this conversation, let's just let's just let's remember that this is a what if I can say it like this, this is a two-way street. There's a there, there there's a highway to heaven and there's a highway to hell. And the highway to hell is ha, is identified in the lust of the eye, the lust of the pride of life, and the flesh. So let's remember that we are on the highway to heaven, and there's a way that, a certain way that we should live, that we know our eternity is safe. Go back to you, guys. So it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. Mm. And the world tries to influence us with many wrong ideas. Mm -hmm. 
One of them is looking out for number one. Huh. That's one of the things that the world will tell you. Uh, when we got all these self-help books and all this stuff, looking out for number one. But Jesus told us to be servants. Uh, put others first. Repeat, repeat that again, sir. He, 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 he told us to be servants. He told us to put others first. Mm -hmm. uh, but the world would tell you, uh, look out for number one. Be uno. It's all about you. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, that's what the world will tell you. Uh, the world will tell you that uh, uh, it's all right uh, to live uh, with the opposite sex before marriage. Mm -hmm. The world will tell you that's all good. But we know uh, if before you do that, uh, you post to get married. Yes, yes. And we don't, we don't like to talk about that. And uh, the world have accepted a cohabitation is what they call it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the old folks call it shacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, so it's okay. Uh, it's okay to be within same-sex relationships, according to the world standard. Yeah. Uh, because the world has accepted it. Now we have where uh, 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 now the uh, same-sex can get married uh, in 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 the, in the United States of America. It has become acceptable. Yes. But we know what the Word of God says about it. Yes. Uh, uh, the world says, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Enjoy yourself. Just do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but we know uh, uh, we we belong to the Lord. Yes. Uh, we can't do what we shouldn't want to do what we want to do. We should want to do what God wants us to do. Yes. Uh, the world says uh, religion is okay, but don't be too extreme. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, as as uh, 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 be uh, uh, as some people call the CME Christian, <laughs> Christian Mother Day and Easter. Does this show up on those on those special days? Uh, and you good? Uh, show up on, on first Sunday so you can take the Lord's Supper, or some people call it communion, and you good. You know, yeah, just show up on, on certain days, and you good. Yeah. But no, we have to. The that's what the world tells you. Mm -hmm. uh, but we just can't. We have to be sold out for Christ yes. every day. Yes. Uh, we can't just pick and choose uh, when we want to serve the Lord. Because mm -hmm. he said, anyone who loves the the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm -hmm. So if you if your priorities are all, if you look at your life. And your priorities are more about the things of this world than mm -hmm. the things of the Lord, then you are operating in worldliness. Right. I read in the message translation, uh, it says the love of the world squeezes out mm -hmm. love for the Father. Uh, squeezes. Can you can, can you imagine? You know, just just take something that you can squeeze. And you squeeze that thing till you get everything out of it. This is what the world does. He, the world puts you under a press. It puts you under a, a, a situation of like, you need to do it my way. And 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 you're and as believers, because I'm talking to believers now, because this is this message was built for believers and practical living. So but as believers, there is a standard, and we cannot give in to the standards of the world. We have to give in, give into the standards of Christ where we're squeezing out the things of the world. We ought to be squeezing every day, putting ourselves under the press of the Holy Spirit to what produce the fruit that God wants in our life. Because we have a God that is alive. That King is real. God has already made the provision. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and flip this. Back, back to a message I heard last night given by my cousin from Isaiah was that chapter uh, 46 verses yeah. 9 and 10. When you get time, you know, if cousin got time, he got to go on and read it because this is what this thing is telling us. When we squeeze in the world out because God has already done the full circle on us. He knows the beginning from the end, the end from the beginning. So we as believers have to trust that when we pick up this word right here, when we pick up this word, we go follow those instructions. You want to live a prosperous and abundant life. 
in the will of the Father, have the kingdom of heaven, right? You're walking in the kingdom of heaven, even though we're in the world. You gotta, you gotta understand this thing, the principles and the promises, because that's what that's what God is adhering to. His word. His word is not going to return void. So don't let the world, don't, don't cross the boundaries. Some of us have already crossed the boundaries because my cousin was mentioning these things, same sex. We are, we are, we are, we are all about uno number one. We've already crossed the boundaries today. You need to come back over and say, Lord, I'm going to stand up for righteousness and go for it every day and squeeze the world. Put the world in your rear view mirror and tell that devil to keep stepping. That, that that way we can walk in the power, in the wisdom, in the grace, and the mercy, knowing that nothing that the world says, no recession, no inflation, nothing will separate us from the love of God. Matter of fact, those things don't even touch us because we're operating from a kingdom of heaven principles and the yeah. spirit of God is with us. So we ought to get up. That's what makes that's what makes this thing all exciting because we are the light of the world. The light that is set on the hill shall be seen. But we have to know that we cannot crisscross. And I'm gonna say crisscross because most of us want to go back and forth, back and forth. No, no, no. Stop the nonsense. Stop the foolery, and put the world in your rearview mirror and begin to press the world out. Don't let the the world press up against you. That's not the will of God because we are what on a highway to heaven, not a highway to hell. Go ahead, Cuff. Yeah, so 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 John makes it very clear as believers uh, is that we have a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, we we either love God or love the world. Uh, we can't choose both. Yeah, we cannot choose both. Uh, and, uh, as cousin says. Uh, uh, she said, crisscross. Uh, I, I say straddling the fence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that you want to straddle the fence. If you, if you straddle the fence long enough, you hurt something. Mm. Uh, so again, it's important that we have to make a choice. Uh, we either got to love the world or love God. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't do both because they are contradictory. Yes. They yeah. are contradictory. Uh, because you, you uh, following God will often means we are going to go against the culture. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Following God is go going to mean we're going to go against the culture. So we must not be too attached to this world. This world is fallen. Yes. It's cursed. Yes. It's sinful. Yes. It's in rebellion to God. His ideas and values are wrong. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they sound good because of the nice packaging. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't make it right. Let me say that again. Yes, say that again. Sometimes it sounds uh, real good mm -hmm. because of the nice packaging. Uh, but it doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. So again, how do you know if you are loving the world or not? Uh, you have to do some, I say it all the time, some self-examination. Yes. Uh, you have to do some self-examination. And one of the quickest ways that you can self-examine yourself, if you love in the world or loving God, you got to ask the question, and I'm going to bounce the cousin, uh, what do you spend the most of your time doing? What do you spend what? It's not, it's, and, and, and that, that's an easy question to answer because you know how much of the word, how many times are, are, how much time you're spending in prayer, how much time you're spending in, in study and how your conversations are going with other people. And I know I'm talking to those that are, are in the marketplace. You're not in ministry, but you're in the marketplace, which is 99% of the population. So if we're in the marketplace and the marketplace is having these conversations that you know don't amount to anything, they're talking about the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. They're talking about those things and you're engaging in those things. But when you're engaging in those things, are you bringing them back to the word of God? Well, you know, this is what the word of God is saying. If someone's talking about same-sex marriages, well, you know what? This is what, what the word of God is saying. This is what God did in the beginning. If you're not doing that, if you're not bringing people 
back to the back to the word of God that is in you, then you already know. You already got an answer to that question. What are you spending your time doing? What are you feeding your spirit as you're out and about in your day? Yeah. And it's 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 easy. I'm telling people would think walking with Jesus Christ is hard, but it is the most easiest thing. Why? Because he he gave us the Holy Spirit that walks with us every day. So if you don't want to agree to the Holy Spirit, you need to start, you know, bringing people back to the word. If, yeah. if, if you will believe it, because the Holy Spirit will always drop nuggets into a conversation that allow you to, 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 to turn that thing around and put their eyes back on kingdom living. As Jesus walked the earth, the only thing he talked about was kingdom. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven is life. The kingdom of heaven. And, and, and even, even when he was healing the sick and, 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 and making provision for those around him, it was all about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of what is the kingdom of heaven like? Most of his parables are operating in the kingdom of heaven. Our conversations on a daily basis or believers need to begin to draw people in to the kingdom of heaven. Because heaven and earth is this is gonna pass away, but the only thing that ain't gonna pass away is God's word. Yeah. So so you know my thing is let's not get it twisted. Stand bold in your faith. Squeeze out the world. Put the thing in the rear view mirror. Shut the door. Walk away from it. Pick this word up in 2023 and say, Lord, open up my understanding to your word. Pro is it, I know it's in Proverbs. In all thy understand, in all thy getting, get understanding. Yeah. Ask the Lord from Genesis to Revelations, Lord, open this thing up called kingdom of heaven so I can walk in it. Because Jesus told the disciples and he's telling us how to pray. Pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Well, if you don't know the word and you're not, you're not living in it every day. And I'm not not just on Sunday. I, I did say every day, didn't I? You did say every day. Yeah, not, not that two hour and, and I got enough and I'll come back and get a shot next Sunday. No, no, no. Pick this thing up seven days a week. 24, if, if you, you know, look, if you can't do a 15, start off short, start off with small segments, because it's something you're starting off with small segments, I'm talking about, pick this thing up, say, Lord, I'm going I'm to read this passage today, and meditate on that, and allow the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit has equipped us with every good thing, with yeah. every good thing he has given us, but for a lot of believers, the kingdom of heaven is still a mystery. Yeah. And it shouldn't be if you've been in this thing five years, 10 years, if you've been in this thing a year, the kingdom of heaven shouldn't be a mystery to you. Yeah. God, should be, God should be opening up your understanding every day. And so that means you have to come before the throne of grace and ask, just like, just, just like King Solomon said when he, got, when he got put in that position, Lord, give me a discerning heart that I might understand. That I might that that I might know good from evil. It says good from bad, depending on what uh, translation you read. But but that but that was his prayer because now he is in leadership over people. And in order to to operate in the kingdom of heaven, he went to the king. Now he the king, but he went to the what? The king of kings, the yeah. Lord of lords. He knew what his position was. Lord, I'm I, I'm the king, but you're the ultimate king with all wisdom, all knowledge, all understanding, all knowing. So make 2023 the place where you say, Lord, I'm gonna give more of my time to you, so that you can, so that so that so that as you enter into that place of prayer and worship and study, when you go out into your workplace, when you go out into the marketplace, when you go out in, in, into those stores, wherever you go, the word of God is speaking to draw men and women because it's time for the and I'm saying for the believer. I ain't even gonna talk about the church because the church, all the churches need to repent because we ain't we ain't even coming together in, in that situation. But when you really study this thing, it's it, it is all about kingdom. Well, if it wasn't, God wouldn't put it in there. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We're still trying to figure out, okay, Lord, where the kingdom come? The kingdom is in you. Yeah. But you got but you got to ask the Lord to unveil the kingdom. So you can walk in the power and the authority of. It's not yeah. hard to do, but you know, like my cousin just said, some self-examination. We all start off 
the new year with some new year's resolution, let that resolution, Lord, I'm going to spend more than two hours. I'm going to spend more than four hours. I'm going to spend every waking moment I have. Lord, I want you to open up your word to me. And if it's just bit by bit, part by part, because he says he'll give it to you little by little, precept upon precept. Is that Am I correct on that? Few precept yeah. upon precept. Yeah. He said, yeah. I'll build it in you. See, God wants his kingdom to come in you. When it comes to us in individual in our individual lives, and we're we and we're prepared for it. And I'm getting ready to chase it. Let me just go ahead. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Y'all know why? Because the righteous don't know how to manage their time. Yeah. And so God says, I'm gonna let the wicked give all your wealth to you over time. But God has said, in this, I'm gonna turn this thing around. Y'all put some time in and understand the kingdom. That wealth will be translated to you in wisdom, power, finances. The kingdoms of the earth will begin to have turned around to be the kingdom of heaven. And the world won't be on top of nothing. It'll be in the rearview mirror. Cousin, go ahead. Let me send that back over to you. <laughs> oh, so again, uh, so, so you have to ra raise the question again, what do you spend the most of your time doing? Mm -hmm. And again, as Cuz just uh, eloquently said, uh, we ought to be spending more of our time in, in prayer. We should be spending more of our time in studying the word. Uh, we should be meditating more, uh, the things of God. And we don't have an excuse about the word mm -hmm. because all of us got a cell phone. Amen. And all of us, all you got to do is download a Bible app. Mm -hmm. and, and if you just download a Bible app, you have access to the word of God everywhere you go. Yes. Because you already know we take them cell phones with us. We don't leave, we don't leave home without them. We right. got them. Uh, because we have our cell phone, we have access to the word of God. Mm -hmm. So just it, it, those of you who are in the workplace, uh, all you got to do when you have a break, uh, you got that cell phone in front of you, uh, uh, and, and then uh, the thing about these uh, cell phones, uh, a lot of them uh, have Bible plans. Yes. Uh, and you could just do a Bible plan. That would be your your reading. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing that I have done the last almost nine to ten years uh, is I read through the Word of God. Amen. I, I, I mean, from Genesis to Revelation, every year for the last nine to ten years, uh, I, I do that, and sometimes I do it uh, chronologically, mm -hmm. uh, to read it in the way that things actually happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, that's something that I, I guess nine to, the last nine to ten years, that's something that I have done. So we don't have an excuse. Uh, 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 we as we as we talked about squeezing out the world. One way of squeezing out the world is putting in some word. Uh, and as we put some word, uh, we will squeeze out the world. But mm -hmm. then it takes us to uh, verse 16. Uh, it says, everything in the world is of lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of one possession is not from the Father, but it is from the world. In other words, we must realize that we cannot be neutral. Amen. Uh, we must not be like the world. We must be different. Uh, but so far, we look at some of the seamless, seamlessly harmless worldly things, but there are a lot more harmful. Uh, so again, you got to look at uh, the lust of the flesh, uh, the lust of the eyes, and, and one translation says the pride of life, uh -huh. uh, the pride of life. And when you look at those three things, those are the three things that trip us up. Amen. Uh, I, I preached a message years ago called The Three Flavors of Sin. Oh. Uh, 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 and every sin that is committed falls in one of these three categories. Amen. Every sin that you and I commit it falls in one of these three categories. Mm -hmm. uh, the lust of the flesh, uh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. Now, the lust of the flesh deals with physical desires. Uh -huh. 
Uh, it deals with physical desires. And again, uh, 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 and as a, dis a the disclaimer, uh, uh, for guys, it's probably that sex is near the top for men. Uh -huh. uh, for women, it's probably more of being uh, the emotional support. Yes, true. Uh, for women. Uh, mm -hmm. But the disclaimer is neither of these things are wrong if it's in the boundary of a biblical marriage. Say that again, cuz. <laughs> Let me say that again. Neither of these are wrong if it's inside the boundary of a biblical marriage. Mm -hmm. However, if lust, it is lust, it is outside of these boundaries. Mm -hmm. uh, the world says lusting like this is okay and normal and reasonable. Fulfill these desires as long as you don't hurt anybody. That's what the world says. Mm -hmm. But God says no. Mm -hmm. uh, you must fulfill these. You must not fulfill these things outside of marriage. Because if you do, you are hurting yourself. And most importantly, you are hurting your relationship with God. Amen. You are hurting your Christian testimony uh -huh. and you're hurting your possible future marriage. Amen. So again, we have to be careful uh, with this lust of the flesh uh -huh. because if we don't do it out, if we don't do it outside of the way God designed it to be, uh, it's sin. Amen. Amen. It's point blank. And I know a lot of us don't like to hear that. We don't like to hear that. Yeah. Uh, we like to have our cake and eat it too. Yeah. That's what the world likes. Mm -hmm. uh, but God has set up uh, biblical boundaries uh, when it comes to sexual relationships. Amen. And we're going to talk about sexual boundaries a little further on in the, in, in the thing. Because okay. we just started with this thing called boundaries. Right, right. Uh, uh, but again, uh, sexual, uh, uh, anything outside of uh, it doing from a biblical perspective is wrong. Amen. Now, could I deal with the lust of the eye piece? Deal with that part. Well, you know what? The, 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 the lust of the eyes are the things that you see every day. You know, e even when you go into your concordance, it talks about the vision that, and, and it's, it's what you're looking at. And sometimes what we're looking at it causes us to lust. I hey, look, I went to the store and I seen a Louis Vuitton bag. I just got to have it. What? Mm. You know, these things, these things that, that 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 draw our attention away from the Father. These things that keep us off balance. And so God is saying, you got to control what you see. You cannot lust after that because the, the enemy is trying to draw you every way he can. I can give you the kingdoms of the world. Look. All these belong to me, believers and non-believers. This is an FYI. Satan no longer owns anything. He didn't own it from the beginning. He took it, and Jesus took it back. Yeah. He no longer owns anything. Don't fall for the foolery, because he injects those things which we see. Always try, because if he can draw our attention by sight, he draws us away from the word. Mm. Oh, I can't go do that. You know, I got I got to get in here and watch all the basketball I can for today. And uh, you know, look, I like the NBA. I do. I like professional basketball. But when it comes to studying the word, I was like, Lord, I got to turn that off right now. Right. That's, that is drawing me from my study time of the word. And so you, we still can enjoy this thing and this life that we have. We just have to be very careful about what or what we lay our eyes on. And sometimes my cousin just left this thing. You know, these are boundaries that we are setting. And when he put it, like he said, for men, and when they're looking, that they're looking at that woman, that's because God put it in them to look. But don't take it outside of marriage. God gave us, we God wants us to have nice things. The garden was full of nice things. God had put everything in there, and he told man to till it. So when man started tilling the earth, they, be, they everything that was green was green. Everything that was good was going to continue to be good. God gave the raw materials, and now we can see that those things are good. So the, so the lust of the eye 
don't 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 get caught in the trap to where it pulls you away from the word of God. Back to you, Pastor. So then that last the last one of these three is the pride of life. Uh -huh. And we already know pride always leads to destruction. Yeah. Uh, we always know that and this pride of life piece is talking about the desire for respect, uh, for power, for flattery, for compliments, for praise. Uh, you want to be patted on the back. Yeah. Uh, you, everything you do, you want somebody to see it so they can yeah. say, look, look, so you can say, look at me, look what I've done, look what I did, look what I, no, yeah. no, 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 it's not about that. Yeah, yeah. It's not about yeah. that at all. Right. Uh, again, we are to be servants. It's not about ourselves. It's not about the me, myself, and I. Uh, it's about serving others. Yes. Uh, when we come to the life of Christ, is we put ourselves on the back burner. Mm. We put others first, and we don't like that because we like to look out for the new number. Like I said earlier, num numero uno. We want. We want to be about me, myself, and I. But when we come to Christ, we got to put ourselves on the back burner. So mm -hmm. if nobody pats you on the back, oh well. If nobody mm -hmm. said how great you did on this certain, on this project or this ministry or this this program, oh well. Mm -hmm. Because once you get in the mindset that you are doing this for Christ. Mm -hmm. then you can care less or see we ought to seek the approval of one yeah. uh, the approval of one we ought to we want to we ought to make sure that that whatever we do that God is, approves it Amen. and if God approves it God's approval of it is much greater than man's approval Amen. Uh, because man will approve you one day and disapprove you the next day Say that again, God. <laughs> Man will approve you one day and disapprove you the next day, and sometimes they will disapprove you the same day. Amen. Uh, uh, but when God, when you, when we long for God's approval, mm -hmm. uh, that's the most um, approval. Uh, uh, that's that's the most important approval that we should be striving for. Amen. Uh, so again, and again, when we look at those three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, those were the three things that messed up uh, Adam and Eve in the garden. Amen. Uh, with the lust of the flesh, they saw that the tree was good for food. Uh -huh. That's the lust of the flesh. Yeah. Uh, 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 of the lust of the eye pieces, they saw it was pleasant to the eyes. It looked good. Uh-huh. Uh, and then the pride piece of that from the garden is the fact that uh, it mm -hmm. would make them wise. Yeah. They yeah. wanted to be wise. Yeah, so yeah. we see in, in those three things, those are the three areas of sin that a mankind can make. Those yeah. three things have been tripping us up since Adam and Eve. Amen. Wow. Those yeah. three things. So then, go ahead. Then that takes us to 17. Uh, and the world is uh, with his lust is passing away, but the one who does the will of God remains forever. Go ahead and tackle that one, Hood. Wow, the world passed away. You know what? It's it's in the back, it's in the rear view mirror, cuz it's good yes. and because it's gonna pass away. Heaven and earth will remain, but the word the, I mean God's word will remain. Heaven and earth is gonna pass away. This thing is 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 done, but God's word is going to stay and it's going to rest. And He tells us because it's it's the will of God that we abide it forever. And that's from the King James version. This is is it's that is is knowing that we are abiding that 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 place. That place is the presence of God. Because what you just said it, and I'm gonna say it again because I like it. All we want to please is one. That's mm. yeah. See, so 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 we have to die to the flesh, to the to to the eye, and to the pride. We got to die to, it. and you can only do that when you you take this thing to the cross and you say, "Lord, I'm gonna carry my cross today because you carried one for me." And we know that that we can stand strong because what the latter half of that says, 
but he that does the will of God will remain mm. forever. Mm. So whose will is more important? Your wants, your needs, your desires are the will of God. Because see, God is going to make sure his purpose is fulfilled in the earth. Yeah. It, it, it is no doubt about it. He, he, he kicked it off from the foundation when he slain the land. He slain his son before man even entered into the atmosphere. Because he knew if he gave man a free will, he had the freedom to choose. Yeah. And just in case he dropped off, and he did, he had what? A ram in the bush. Mm. And his son said yes to his will. And as he said, I, he is the only begotten. Why he's the only begotten of the father? Because he said, yeah, and he meant it. From the foundation, before Jesus came into this atmosphere, he'd already died to self. Hey, good God of my, that's my good mind. gospel. I don't know about y'all, but that, that's good gospel right there. And that's what, that's, that's what this piece is telling us. When we're talking about boundaries, don't cross it. You came out of darkness to walk in the marvelous light. Stay put. Yeah. Ain't no sense of you like, and I'm gonna say it. I probably say it for every every time we come on this thing. Put the world in the rear view mirror. Just just don't just look. Oh yeah, you're in the back. Yeah. Because when you die to self, that's what you do. Because this right here, this piece right here, is more important. That verse seventeen, that you remain. That you remain the will of God and you remain in his presence. Jesus told his disciples, if you, if you do me, if, if you remain in me, I remain in you. Yeah. He gave them a command and followed up with a promise. That's what this is saying right here. Back to you, Pastor. Yeah. So again, uh, in this episode, we've been have tried to explain to you the importance importance of making the right choice uh you gotta you have a choice to make uh either to love the world or to love god that's a choice you have to make that's a choice each and every one of us uh believers and if they're non-believers all of us have to make a choice we have to make a decision uh if we are we going to love god or if we're going to love the world. Mm -hmm. If we're going to love the world, we know it's going to pass away. Mm -hmm. If we love God, we know we're going to live forever. It's just that simple. Amen. Love the world uh, is <laughs> headed to destruction. Mm -hmm. If you love God, you're going to live forever. Mm -hmm. That's the choice that you have to make. Uh, again, we've been talking about boundaries. Uh, 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 that's the choice. That's the boundary that you have to choose. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one or the other. You can't have either or. It's no way because they count. So they're so contradictory. Mm -hmm. And it's it is my it is my desire and my clear desire that you choose God. Amen. That's our desire. Mm -hmm. uh, that you choose God because many of you if you just tell the truth then shame the devil uh, you have loved the world and you know what it ain't done you no good amen amen let's be real uh, y'all know I'm telling the truth uh, you, we, you, uh, and, and all of us who have been have been believers we ain't forgot mm -hmm. you know we, some people get saved and they have convenient amnesia and want to forget about uh, what they did when they were in the world Oh, no, no, we ain't forgot. We just been delivered from it. Amen. We ain't forgot what Amen. all you know. So a lot of times people get get in and get and get saved, and then they forget about uh, you know. Oh, they they you know we took down talk them real bad and all that, and we were just like that before Amen. we turn our lives over to the Lord. Amen. Same way. Amen. And a lot of people get convenient amnesia when they've been with the Lord for a length of time and forget that it was them too uh, in that same condition. So mm -hmm. again, if you're watching this or you're listening to this, it is our prayer that you choose God. Mm -hmm. 
And whether you are watching or listening to this, whenever you're watching it in the day or, uh, or noontime or afternoon or evening or late night, whenever you watch or listen to this, it is our design uh, that you choose God. Uh, we have ch shared with you uh, what the love of the world will lead you to. Uh, it will lead you to destruction. Amen. Uh, but if you love God, uh, you will remain and live with him forever. Amen. So let us pray. Our Father and our God, again, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name uh, because you are worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praises. Lord, we thank you for you being God. We thank you, God, that uh, you have reminded us we can't love the world, uh, but we have to love you. So we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, that you will help us uh, and help us to love you. And those who haven't done it before, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they will start loving you and then you lead them and guide them even right now. So we thank you. We praise you. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We pray you have enjoyed our conversation today. Thanks for spending time with us. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next week. of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network. I am your host, Sherry T., and this is the best day of your life because God is in control. Our show today is Conversation with Cousins from a Christian Perspective, featuring Eddie J. and your host, Sherry T. Enjoy the show after a word from our sponsor. I want to give you Five days of my 30-day devotional, Pursue Righteousness, Standing on the Promises of God. This book aims to help you clear your mind from the outside noise, quiet your mind to hear the Good Shepherd's voice, and renew your mind with the promises of victory over depression, anxiety, and scarcity. Click on the link below. Thank you for listening to the Echoes of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network. Partner with us. Like, subscribe, support. Visit our website, livingbiblehub.com. Until next time, peace, love, and blessing.